World Bank funded uh, oil pipeline project in Chad is raising questions about its operations there, especially as they affect rural villages. The project was evaluated by researchers from Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, as Ramon Taylor reports. When the Chad Pipeline project began nearly 10 years ago, the World Bank sought to create a successful poverty reduction model for the country, one that could create $2 billion of revenue for Chad over 25 years in exchange for nearly 1 billion barrels of crude oil. The oil is extracted from wells in southern Chad and transported through Cameroon to the Atlantic coast via a 1,000-kilometer pipeline. Residents whose land is used for oil extraction were given various forms of compensation, including $18 million worth of cash and in-kind payments, as reported by ExxonMobil, the oil consortium's primary affiliate. Siba Grovagi is a professor of political science. He says that the project's compensation model has at least one significant flaw. People who imagine compensation or imagine all these measures that were supposed to mitigate resettlement, not resettle, had either forgotten or skipped over one phase, which is that you actually need an economy. Grovagi says that some of the compensation sums in rural Chad were actually too large. In many cases, uh, the money that people are receiving is far more than many people had imagined they could have in a lifetime. Um, and, and a lot of them then don't know what to do with their money, uh, partly because, again, um, there's no institution for saving, there's no banking mechanism, etc. Mr. Gervagi argues that even in villages where some NGOs have set up banks, there's a severe lack of borrowing. The World Bank, which was unavailable to be quoted for this story, says that some of its efforts in providing microloans to villagers and training and small business lending will eventually provide indirect benefits to Chad. Johns Hopkins researcher Lori Leonard says compensation and training for farmland owners in Chad must deal with basic economic realities. The pipeline has not really generated an econ it hasn't generated an economy in the oil field region. So um, these cash payments for compensation are very sporadic, uh, you know, sort of injections of cash, but they're not regular salaries. And so when you train someone to be a mason or a mechanic or a carpenter, um, you know, their income is really uh, unstable and irregular because they're, they're, it's very often that no one in the village has money. Also problematic is the issue of public health within these rural villages. ExxonMobil says that more than $9 million have been distributed for initiatives including health care. Grovagi and Leonard say, however, that these efforts are not enough. Think about how you create health infrastructure, who goes to health, how, who can have access to it, and et cetera. Or, or having market institutions, how they will work for people, and et cetera. Um, that's really not something you just parachute in, and it's not something you buy. Just giving people money does not give you that. There have been those kinds of investments, but um, at the level of the village, people have not seen, it hasn't trickled down yet to that level. Grace Codindo, Chadian OBGYN and professor at Columbia University, says that new health centers have been built in Chad, but says she hopes that more supplies and equipment will follow. We really hope that uh, health services uh, well equipped and uh, with enough supplies be made uh, affordable and accessible to all people living in rural areas. Because this is where most of people are dying. So if they can have access to good health services, that would be fantastic. If you look at the, the outcomes of oil pipelines uh, in Africa, uh, they're typically not good uh, in terms of public health uh, outcomes. It may surprise us, but, I, but at, at the moment, it's, it's really difficult to be optimistic. Despite these early problems, the World Bank says that Chad's oil pipeline project has complied with the project's original environmental and social safeguards, and that the project's benefits will be evident in time. I'm Ramon Taylor for VOA News.